For those of you that have not been following this channel, let me go ahead and give you a quick background. So this house right here was in Akiya, which means that it was a vacant house in rural Japan. And we paid 5 million yen for this house. Originally it was listed for 6 million. However, because we offered to take out the property, the previous owner's property out of the house ourselves, uh, it was re reduced to 5 million yen. And 5 million yen at the time, based on the yen rate, it came out to about a little bit over $35,000. That does not include the real estate agent fees, uh, closing fees, and other stuff like that. That I will, towards the end and probably like the third video of this series, I will discuss all those exact details and hopefully even the renovation. Okay, so the property consists of this house that was built in 1975. It is approximately 1,600 square feet. Typical Japanese house, no insulation, uh, you know, rather old. So we're about the halfway point of our renovation process right here. So let me go ahead and give you an, uh, an update of what it looks like inside the house and what has been done thus far. So let's go ahead and start with the windows. So all the windows have been replaced throughout the entire house. These windows are double pane windows, beautiful large windows looking out to the front. Really looking forward to that. And over there on the Engawa side, there's also another big window. The bedroom window. Like I said, throughout the entire house, double pane windows. So all, all these lower ceilings have been removed and, um, and insulation installed between the original roof and then covered with sheetrock. And then on top of that, there would be shikui, the shikui Japanese plaster. All the beams are being exposed as much as possible. This is right here. I'm sitting in the bedroom area. So these beams right here should be exposed as we're laying in bed. There will be only one tatami room in this house, which will be right here in front of us. Uh, so you can see right here where, there's, where the floor ends. This area will be the tatami room adjacent to the bedroom. So we're going to have the sliding door. So it's kind of a, an extended bedroom slash tatami room. Over there on the far end is the, the ngawa, which is a typical for older Japanese houses. This one is only a little bit smaller one. Uh, normal old Japanese houses, the ngawa can wrap around the entire house. Got the Genkan, the entrance. Additionally, the uh, a new door was installed. Nice, beautiful sliding door. All this area right here would be uh, retiled as well. This right here is the walk-in closet. Not uh, the biggest in the world, but big enough for us. And uh, if we can't fit our personal clothes in there, quite frankly, we have too many clothes, which I don't think I have too many. Okay. 
This section right here is the shower and sink area. If you are familiar with Japanese, typical Japanese houses, you normally have the washer and dryer in the sink area. Uh, we do not necessarily want that. And through this door right here, we are adding an extension to the house, which would be the laundry room. The point of it is that be nice and flat going out as well. And on, there would be a little section for like a sunroom so that you can dry your clothes as well. This right here is where the old bathtub used to be and where the new bathtub will be. Uh, again, right now it is May 9th and according to this sign right here, May 13th, they're coming out to do some more work here in the bathroom. So that should be coming up shortly. This section right here is the living room. Right here where the scaffolding is at is where the couch will be. And then the, the side wall of the closet will be like the entertainment center where the TV will be as well. And then moving over to the dining room area right here. These beautiful big beams that were installed. I covered that on previous videos. If you have not seen the video watching the Japanese carpenters installing these beams, please go back and watch it. Quite express, quite impressive. It's a little bit long, my apologies, but I really did not want to cut out too much information. So these beams were precisely fit on each end and then secured with these wood pegs on this end right here over there as well and then they are bolted in from the outside of the house on each end there's these large bolts that, that come in as well too so they're not necessarily just hanging there like that but these beams again they will be beautifully exposed this section is the kitchen and there will be an island right here and your typical um, sink and uh, refrigerator and stove over here on the far left. And through this door right here is where they are going to install a pantry. Again, so a lot of nice work coming along. On the upstairs, we have Chioko's craft room. Originally, this was two different rooms and a little hallway and a couple closets. We tore all of that down and got rid of the closets. One of the closets right here on the far right is going to be converted into a half bath. So there'll be a toilet right there. They have already ran the plumbing and electricity for that. All the beams in here would be exposed as well. Get nice big windows. And we have some good plans here for Choco to convert it into a craft room. But also we will leave some room right here. So if there's company, we could always spread out some mattresses, air mattresses, or sleep like Japanese style on the floor. We are also installing brand new electrical throughout the entire house. Hopefully this time we'll have plenty of circuits for and outlets for everything we can possibly think of. We went through the plans multiple times to make sure that we captured what we thought we needed, but uh, you always tend to forget something. So at least we did our due diligence and tried to uh, think of where we would want different receptacles, outlets, and whatnot. For example, right here we have two hanging lights and this beam that which would be right uh, above the couch. And then I specifically wanted a, an on-off switch 
right here, which is within reaching distance from the couch. Another thought for the electrical was an outlet right next to the table so that if we are cooking at the table with a hot plate, we can uh, do it without running an extension cord across the floor. On the island, there would be outlets on the sides. Again, same concept so that they're not running across the floor. And inside the pantry, there will be multiple outlets because that's where we plan on putting some other items such as rice cooker, bread maker, and stuff like that. Upstairs in the craft room where Choco will have a, like a table, a large table in the middle of the floor, there would be an outlet on the floor there as well. And uh, there would be an outlet outside and actually not right now because i don't know exactly where it'll be but there will be electricity running from this corner of the house to the pond so that we have floodlights uh projected into the the japanese garden and uh, that beautiful tree The house also came with this beautiful Japanese garden. Yes, I know it doesn't look that beautiful right now, but I can see the potential. But it was covered with brushes and looks like they just used it as a dumping ground, quite frankly. And uh, we spent hours and hours cleaning it out, still working on it. That'll be another series of the process in which I improved this Japanese garden. But again, it did come with all these decorative rocks, beautiful rocks. It's actually a pretty, pretty good size area, really nice lantern. It, do, it did seem to come with a water because you can see a little spigot out of there, but I can't find the source. Beautiful, beautiful lantern. It came with the house. This tree is just absolutely gorgeous. During the fall, it turns even redder. It's a bright, bright red. It's a beautiful tree. I've seen some pictures of the house uh, back in the 1970s or so, uh, late, late, late 70s, I guess I should say, and this tree was here. So it's quite old. So in addition to the house, it came with a little guest house, which we are calling La Casita, the little house in Spanish. Uh, one of the uh, items, one of the upgrades that we're doing to the, the guest house, the interior would look the same as the main house with the wood floors and shikui walls and everything else. But in addition to that, we are also adding a shower and toilet right here. Additionally, it comes with a little storage unit, which I am calling the man cave. It's big enough for a little tinkering and stuff like that. Uh, it does have electricity in it, but I'm adding more outlets. Excuse all the background noise. The carpenters are doing work in the house right now as we speak. What I like about this casita, it has nice big windows very similar to the house so it's not going to feel too claustrophobic and it'll be great for when uh, company and family comes to spend a night or more than a night you're welcome to stay 
Additionally, it comes with a nice large garage, larger than your typical two-car garage that you have like in the United States. However, it does not have electricity and does not have uh, garage doors, but that will be part of this project as well to install electricity and some doors. So there's my uh, little chingona, which I baptized like chingona, which in Spanish kind of translates to a very hard working woman, put it that way. <laughs> this truck has been awesome. I highly recommend that if you're going to take on a project like this, that you invest in one of these mini trucks. Um, I have, with this truck, I literally made 15, 10, 15 trips to the different recycle centers, threw away everything. I've gathered a lot of wood, uh, run a lot of errands and purchased stuff for the house. So I could keep going on and on about how useful these little trucks are. We paid $1,200 for this truck. It's a 1993 Subaru Sambar 4x4 supercharger, uh, five speed air conditioner. Oh, it's just absolutely awesome. I just love this truck. Along with the house, the guest house, the man cave, and the garage behind me, the land consists of three quarters of an acre with many, many trees. We have been clearing the grounds quite a bit, pruning and discovering what type of trees we have here. So we have, I mean, obviously there's a maple tree here. We have a fig, we have a kiwi, a cherry chestnuts up, up on the top over there with which is called the mountain a peach tree uh, different japanese plums a lime tree right there uh, all kinds of different trees that are in this property and i'm hoping that i can uh, give them a second chance because they are full covered with kuzu when we bought this property this kiwi tree was full of kiwi but they never fully developed uh a buddy steve from real world japan he gave me a hint that if you put them with uh, apples they will fully ripen uh, he did send me some apples however it i think it was a little bit too late but however this year i'll be definitely trying it so please stay tuned for that you can see that there are a whole bunch of little Kiwi starting to develop right there. If you have watched other videos, you will see that the house, the grounds, the trees were covered with kuzu, these vines. And literally, here in a matter of a couple weeks, they are starting to grow back. Well, they never really left. I just kind of weed eated them down, but I need to start coming out here and getting rid of pulling them by the roots. And of course you wouldn't be in Japan if you did not have bamboo shoots. So this last weekend, about three days ago, I came and cleared any bamboo shoots, which is called Takenoko. But you got some more coming. That's just a little baby one. I see a couple more coming out. This bad boy right here, in about three days, it'll be maybe about six feet. And I'll give you an example. See here, there's some more. That one sticking out right there was not there this weekend. So on the other side of the property is the mountain. We have multiple chestnut trees which they are the Ganeguri type, and Miwa is very famous for the Ganeguri chestnut. There, there in the back we have some Japanese plum as well. This part of the property is what we are calling the lower backyard. 
unfortunately right here there used to be the older house and you can still see a lot of the remnants of the foundation and rocks and even some of the old uh, wood frame of the house so little by little we need to get this cleaned out as well flattened out with a bulldozer or something make it nice and flat and plant some nice grass there are a couple of trees in here as well to include a peach tree And on the upper side is what we are calling the upper backyard. And again, this one is a little bit nicer, flatter uh, weeds, but looking a whole lot better than it used to before. There are a couple more fruit trees there as well. Japanese plums and other trees. Along this little trail right here is the borderline of our property. Comes up, comes up to about the corner right here and follows the fence line all the way to the mountain where I was at and down to the garage. So all of that consists of about three quarters of an acre. You can see my neighbors over here are starting to plant their rice already, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I'm not living here yet, but uh, I would like to kind of watch them every day, see how this progress goes. And next to this neighbor, there's another neighbor. I think there's at least a couple of neighbors with their gardens, really beautiful gardens. Every evening I see them out here doing work and we exchange pleasantries. And again, this is another view of the back side of the house. In the backyard, we had a little tanuki, which I have now relocated him to the front of the house. And his job is to guard the house. So a tanuki is like a mystical Japanese raccoon dog. And uh, I moved him over here because poor guy was covered up with kuzu and weeds and everything. The other day, I saw a female tanuki. So uh, I think uh, once I find one, the same size as this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy him a partner so that he's not here all alone. Uh, Mr. Tanuki here has become our channel logo. Um, what, one thing I do need to do is kind of draw it nice in like kind of a graphic. So if there's any graphic designers out there, uh, hit me up if you uh, wish to take on the task of drawing him in a nice, like a cartoon character.